One counts from the center to determine the guided rectangle. We can use, we can also, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> they can also be used to determine the slope of the asymptotes. In both cases, the distance from the center to the foci C can be found using RC equals A squared plus B squared, square root of that, right? So what we used last time. So let's break this down. Let me put this down. So we have our horizontal, horizontal hyperbola, okay, having a squared minus b squared, okay, this is our horizontal, right, and as you can see, we have our vertices for a and b helping us with the height of that rectangle there. Um, that allows us to help us with our asymptotes, okay? And C, of course, is that distance from the vertex to the foci, okay? Then we have our vertical hyperbola, okay? So B is still the vertical, but in this case, this is where the tran transverse axis is, whereas A is our conjugate, or rectangle, so on and so forth. But of course, the best way to learn this is to keep practicing. So let's do some notes here. Lastly, note that we can quickly distinguish the equation of the hyperbola from that of a circle and ellipse because it involves that difference. So keep in mind, we have x squared, y squared, but we have that minus and we have that different a and b, okay? So let's uh, graph this. It says, identify the vertices and the foci of the hyperbola given by the equation y squared divided by 49 minus x squared divided by 32 equals 1. So first of all, what I want you to see is that y squared is first. It is a hyperbola because of subtraction. y squared is first, so we're talking about it being vertically. We see that um, x squared and y squared are by themselves there. So we know that the center is at 0, 0. Okay. Um, we can see that a squared is 32 which means A is the square root of 32. Keep in mind that if we were to break that down, that was four square root of two. B squared is 49, making B seven. Now let's keep in mind, let me get a different marker. Okay, zero, zero. Okay, that means B7, so we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, since it's, it's vertical, that means the vertice 1 and vertice 2. Let's see, that means it's 0, 7, and 0, negative seven, okay, and that's vertice. Um, so the foci remember the foci come from the distance C, so that comes from C, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Uh, so C equals 32 plus 49 equals the square root of 81. So the foci is 9. And remember the foci, that C is the distance from the center. Remember that? So that means that the foci is 9 from the center. 9 from the center, so that's the foci, 
And we don't know, oh, we do know stuff, or we know where our rectangle is because we know that A is four square root of two. So I'm gonna one, two, three, four, a little bit out. One, two, three, four, a little bit out. So I know that my box, my rectangle goes up and down that A and B spot. Which then we know if we are to grab a ruler and we're gonna be able to find these out in the next couple examples. Usually I have a ruler here, guys. I guess I could use a straight edge. Oh, there it is. So, hold on one second. Sorry, guys, somebody came in my room. So with that rectangle, because remember the asymptotes will go through the center and the corner. Okay, so my asymptotes are gonna be like this. Now I know that even though my hyperbola is not going to be perfect, I at least know that my hyperbola, because don't forget the vertex is here, that's the focus. We'll get very close to those asymptotes. Ta-da. All right, let's see what else we can do. Because you know there's got to be more complicated questions than just here's the equation. Find this out. Sorry, I dropped my finger. Okay. And class has started. All right. So find the standard form of the equation of the hyperbola that has the vertices um, plus or minus six comma zero and the foci. There we go. So of course, just like we've done in the past, when we're given information, you might want to look at that information when it shows us. Okay. So if I were to sketch this out, one, two, three, four, five, six. Here would be a vertice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here would be another vertice. Okay. The foci is a two plus the square root of 10. Well, if we think about that, you can do it on your calculator just so you can see where it ends, that value. And you'll see that it's 6.32, 6 blah, 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 blah. So my foci is just going to be a little bit beyond my vertices, which of course that shows us what? It shows us that the hyperbola is going to be a horizontal. Okay, so I know I'm going to have a x squared minus y squared, okay? I know the center is zero, zero, because that's what we're assuming. We haven't gone beyond it. So I have an x squared over something minus y squared over something equals one. So that's what I have so far. Now, let's talk about this. Of course, when we talk about the horizontal here, that is your a value. So think of this. If A is the value of 6, that's how far we went out, right? That means A squared equals 36. So right away, I can plug in that 36 there. Now to find that B, we can do that by knowing the distance of the foci. Okay, so the foci itself is plus or minus 2 square root of 10, right? And that distance is what we said was C. Well, let's talk about this. Um, when we go back to C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared, we can start filling in to knowing what's going on, right? 
So the first thing I'm going to want to do here is plug in where I can. So plus or minus 2 square root of 10 equals the square root of 36 plus b squared. Now let's solve. I don't like that square root there, so how do you get rid of a square root? We square both sides. Okay, well if I square this, 2 square root of 10, don't make it harder on yourself. Put it in a calculator, make it do it for you. You find that you get the value of 40. So we get 40 equals 36 plus b squared. And then we do our algebra. So 4 equals b squared. Now guys, just like with our ellipses, you don't have to go further. We don't care about b itself, we care about b squared. So that means that value is 4, and here is our equation. All right, but we know just like ellipses and circles and parabolas, not everything starts at zero, zero. So we have our h and k again. Nothing big, no big deal, okay? Now, let's interpret that. First of all, let's put this down. We know it's a hyperbola because what it tells us, right? And because of the subtraction. Then I see it's an x squared, so this is going to be a horizontal. I'm going to write this down to keep in mind, then it should look like that. Okay, center. The center right away I see is 2, comma, 0. A squared is 4, which means A is 2, B squared is 25, so B is 5. Why don't I graph that to see what I have so far, right? So 2, 0 is my center. That means my vertices, since it's horizontal, my vertices go up to Okay, and then my um, conjugate axis, right, goes up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I then can put my rectangle together. Okay, that means, again, if I do my corners for my axes. Okay, again, have to keep in mind, I'm going to fill this side out because it's horizontal. And one more thing I have to find, it asks me to find the foci. Oh, and in this case, it makes us find the equations. That's going to be our big one. So let's do the foci first, and then I'm actually going to show you how to find these equations, okay? So foci, of course, comes from C, and C is the square root of A squared plus B squared. So C equals the square root of 29. Now remember, that's from the center and it's going out that far. That means the focus is 2 plus the square root of 29, comma 0. And that would be the one on the side. So the other side would be 2 minus the square root of 29, 0. Okay, remember because it's from the center. So a little bit, let's see, what is that, 5? A little bit more than 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a little bit more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a little bit more. Okay, of course, I know that my hyperbola is going to look like this, but 
as you saw me reading it before, it wants you to actually know what the equations of the asymptotes are, okay? So I'm actually gonna grab a new sheet of paper because I need that, um, I need more space, okay? All right, I'm just trying to get some pen work here. All right, so how do we know? Well, first of all, when we're finding the equation, the linear equations, right? We know our slope. Our slope is rise over run. And what do you know? Our rise, so the slope, rise is our B value over our run, which is our A value, okay? So in this case, our B is five, our A is two. And you guys can see that one slope would be positive and the other slope would be negative, okay? Now, of course, slope is always in front of X. We have Y equals, Y equals, now, this one's a little bit easier to identify, okay? Because as you can see, what point does it go through there? It goes through the point negative five, zero. And this one goes to the point five, zero. Well, guys, that's where it crosses the y-axis. So you put it in the y-intercept form, okay? I'm gonna do it a different way to solve, to show you. If I am trying to find what we are adding to find our equation, another way that we could do this is what is called point slope, okay? Point slope is y, e y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. Those of you who took calculus last year, they should look familiar. Those of you who've not, you might have not ever seen this because um, they usually don't teach this linear equation anymore. It kind of stinks. And the reason why I like using this one instead of y equals mx plus b is because we're not always given the y-intercept. So I'm going to show you what it is if we are given the slope and we know what point it goes through. Now the reason why I say what point it goes through is if you see on our, on our graph here, this line goes through this point, right? It's the corner of our rectangle. I'm gonna use this point for the other one. Again, because we're not always gonna assume that it's gonna be, the, the y-intercept's gonna be given to us, okay? So when doing this, I know that my slope is still this five over two. So I'm going to do the positive one first. So what happens is I get y minus, and what is this coordinate here? The y value to this coordinate is five. Our slope is our positive one, so five over two times x minus, and the x value to this was one, two, three, four. So you guys see right here that this point is four, five. I'm just plugging it into the x1, y1. Now, depending on your homework or on a quiz or a test what this looks like, you might have to rearrange it to y equals. To do that, distribute first. So I get five halves x minus 20 over two. We know that value right, is negative 10, and then we add five to both sides, we get five half x, negative 10 plus five is negative five. So this is the positive slope of that 
that um, asymptote. That's the equation for that um, asymptote that goes in the positive direction. We can do the same thing for the other one with the negative. We have y minus, but if you look it down here, I'm going to go to this one, right? That's still the value of 4, but it's negative 5. y minus negative 5 equals, and remember, this is the negative slope one. So this is the negative 5 halves times x. And again, we're still at the value of 4. So I have y plus 5. Distribute the other side out. We get negative 5 halves x plus 20 over 2. Now, that's 10, and we're going to subtract 5. So y equals negative 5 halves x plus 5. And we're good to go. These are our two equations of our asymptotes. This is going to be the hardest thing. Some of you might want to pause, rewind, go through that idea again. I'm telling you this because that rectangle will not always land nicely on the y-intercept. So using this point slope helps with your algebra. Now, you can use any point on that line to help you. I just happen to use a corner knowing that I'm going to the right a whole number and going up or down a whole number. Okay, we'll have more practice with this. All right, this one, of course, we have to get tricky, right? That's not fair. Find the equation of the hyperbola with the asymptotes y equals plus or minus 2 and the vertices. So let's draw it out because I want to see what I'm looking at. Okay, um... So y plus or minus 2, that means I have a linear equation that way and a linear equation that way. Of course, I'm just sketching it out to see what it looks like. The vertices are going to be at 5, 0. So 5, 0, negative 5, 0. Okay, again, so we're dealing with a horizontal. I want you to keep in mind that the center is at the midpoint of the vertices. Well, the great thing about them being here is what's the center? The center is 0, 0 in this case. Okay, well, it's horizontal. That means A is the value of 5. All right, let's start setting that setting this up. It's horizontal, so we know it's x squared first. We already know a is 5, so this is going to be over 25 minus y squared all over whatever b is equals 1. Okay, how do we find b here? What helps us find b? This does. 2x well, 2, so if you remember, the slope equals 2. And we know from the last problem that the slope was B over A. Okay, it buys over run. So if I set these two, they're both plus or minus. If I set these two equal to each other, so b over a equals plus or minus two. And don't we know a? A is five. So right now we have b over a, or over five, sorry, equals plus or minus two. That means b must be plus or minus 10, right? Because I multiply both sides by 5. 
Now, if you're sitting there, you're like, Ms. Hackman, we have two answers. How can we have two answers? Do we need B? What do we need? We need B squared. Well, if you square plus or minus 10, you still get 100. So we put 100 in the denominator there, and there is our equation. A lot of information in here, okay? So let's keep in mind what we need with center, vertices, foci. A and B helps you create the rectangle. A and B also helps you create the slope of the asymptotes. And we have to find the equation. That's a lot of information, so make sure you go through things step by step. All right, more. Why would it end? You gotta complete the square, right, guys? Okay, so it says here, put the equation in a standard form, find the center and vertices, foci, and the equations of the asymptotes. So it's gonna give us more practice with the asymptotes. So hopefully we have a better handle on it now. All right, let's complete the square. What I want you guys to notice is that the y squared is positive and the x squared is negative. That means it's going to be a vertical hyperbola. Okay, so we have 9y squared minus, and we're gonna have to, um, we're gonna have to take out that minus there. So x squared, so if I factored out that negative, that becomes a plus 6x equals 10. Take a moment to see what I just did. When I separated, okay, I have to imagine this as a positive x squared. To do that, I have to factor out that negative. When I factor out that negative, this becomes a positive 6. Now I'm going to complete the square. Remember that's b over 2 squared, so we get 9. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do the other, but here's a trick. Trick, trick, trick. Did I take, and did I put in a positive 9? What's this number out front here, guys? Negative 1. So remember, I have to multiply these before. So negative 1 times 9 is a negative 9. Think of it as me saying that I'm bringing a negative 1 of positive 9. Think of it like that. Okay, let's complete the square right now. I got 9y squared minus x plus 3 squared equals 1. All right. The only thing I don't like right now is I don't like this nine in front. Because usually on a, on a standard form, let me get the standard form so you guys can check that out again. Remember, the parentheses has one in front of it. So what can we think of this as? Well, instead of a nine in on the top, we can think of it as a one ninth on the bottom. Okay. It's easier to look at this backwards because dividing by a fraction is same as multiplying by its reciprocal. That's where the nine would come in. Problems won't be this tricky on the actual test, guys. But remember that it has to be one in front of x squared or y squared. Okay, so what does this tell us? Well, first of all, it tells us the center is at, remember, opposite, negative 3, 0. It tells us that our a squared is 1 ninth. So A is one third. 
and that our b squared is one, leaving our b as one. Okay, and that means our distance from the center to the foci is the square root of one ninth plus one, which is ten ninths. Sorry guys, that was interesting again. Um, okay, let's start putting these down on paper so we can actually show the coordinate of these different pieces. So center is at negative three, zero. Okay, now this one's gonna be a little bit different because A is only a third away. So this is going to be right here right here, B is one way, so at least that's up. Now don't forget though that this is a vertical um, hyperbola. So when we look at the box here, okay, and we kind of sketch those asymptotes in, okay. I can tell you that right here, so we have the vertice at negative three, oh, I did something wrong, do you guys see it? I hope you caught me before I did. B is actually one ninth. Hopefully you caught me, and I caught myself now because I was a little confused. There we go. So let me just change these around. Okay, the C stays the same. So this is B squared, A squared. Now I'm, I'm kind of glad I made this mistake is because a lot of people are actually um, switch their A and their B around. So this is going to be a little bit different and of course I did in pen, didn't I? Um, so actually since B is one third, that means our vertice is at negative three, positive one third. The other vertice is at negative three, negative one third, okay? Um, our foci goes beyond that. Now, because we are a vertical hyperbola, we have to remember that we're adding this on to the up and down, which is the y value. So when you talk about the foci here, that's the distance from the center, right? So the center for our y value is zero, so we're adding and subtracting it from the zero. So our foci point is at negative three square root of 10 over nine, and negative three negative square root of 10 over nine, because we add it from the y value of the center. Okay. This is where it gets tricky, right? Because now we have to do the equations of our asymptotes, right? Okay, so again, we're going to no matter what do the uh, slope point equation. The slope, of course, is B over A. So let's talk about that slope is B, which is one third over a, which is one, right? Well, if we reduce that, that of course is just one third because anything over one is itself. Plus or minus because we have a positive slope and a negative slope. Now, when we plug that into our equation, right? I said we need a point. And on the last one, we use the corners of the rectangle. But what is another point that our line goes through? Well guys, if we can't find the corners, we can find the center. Because the asymptote goes through, remember, if we talk about the box, right? It goes through the center and the corners there. You guys see that? 
So I actually can just plug in the center point, which is nice because our center point looks a little bit better than the other ones, right? So we have y minus y1. The y to our point is zero equals, and then of course I, I have the first slope of positive one-third times x minus our x value, which is negative 3. And then, of course, we can simplify this. So y equals 1 third x, when I distribute, plus, and then 3 over 1 third is 1. So that is one of the asymptotes. I have to do that whole process again, but with the negative one-third slope. But what's great is I can still use the center point to do this. So I'm going to do it over here in this corner since I'm running out of room. Y minus zero equals a negative one-third times X minus negative three. Simplify that and get Y equals negative one-third X minus one. Okay. Oops, sorry, you guys can't see that. So better idea than what I what we did last time on the other page. Use the center as your point, as your x1, y1. Always use the center. Slope is b over a. Use the center as your point. And that will help you find your asymptotes. Okay. All right. Now let's do some real life applications. Okay. Hyperbolas or hyperbolas, whatever how you want to pronounce it, have real world applications in many fields. They can be used to model the passive comments, supersonic bearings, ancient Gertesian pillars, and natural draft cooling towers. The design efficiency of our hyperbolic cooling tower is particularly interesting. Cool towers are used to transfer waste heat, heat to the atmosphere and are often toted for the ability to guarantee power efficiency efficiently. Um, because of their hyperbolic form, these structures were able to withstand extreme winds while re requiring less material than any other forms of their size and strength. So let's see what we can do with it. The design layout of a hyperbolic cooling tower is shown below. The tower stands 179.6 meters tall. The diameter of the top is 72 meters. At their closest, the size of the tower, so closest, of course, is going to be that middle part right there, is 60 meters apart. Find the equation, so we're writing an equation, of the hyperbola that models the cooling tower. Assume the center of the hyperbola is in the origin of the coordinate plane. Round final values to four decimal places. Okay. So we're going to assume that the center is right here, okay? And of course, just like we did with the ellipse, let's make it as simplistic as possible, which is showing that the zero, that the center is at zero, zero, okay? And as you can see, how our hyperbola forms is horizontally. Does everyone see that? Because it curves on the sides here. So right now, our equation sits at x squared over something minus y squared over something equals 1. Okay? All right. Now, remember, this value is a, and it's the same distance on both sides, so that means a is 30. Well, we have to square it before we put it in our equation. So 30 squared is 9. All right, where do we go from here? Well, if this was a Cartesian point, as you can see, these corners lie on the, on the hyperbola. 
which means those corners are x comma y values that make this statement true. So if this were an x y coordinate plane, I can see that this coordinate right here is the coordinate coordinate. Well, that's halfway through, right? So that's 36 comma 79.6. I got the 36 because it's halfway 72. Because remember, if this was y here of zero, this would be 36. So I have the x value of 36, the y value of the 79.6. Now I can plug that in to help me solve for b. So I get 36 squared over 900 minus 79.6 squared over b squared equals 1. Yes, this looks messy, but all real life situations are messy. b squared, sorry. Okay, so what I would do guys right now in your calculator, and of course mine's a little bit more intense than you are able to use, make sure you're okay on your parentheses. 1 minus, because I'm going to subtract this from both sides, we've got 36 squared divided by 900. Now, don't worry, because if they're both negative here, they cancel. So what happens is I would have 79.6 squared over b squared equals 0.44. How do you solve this? Multiply both sides by b squared, divide by 0.44 square root. So I really don't want to estimate in the middle of the problem, but in this case, we're kind of half, have to do that. So let's do 79.6 squared divided by our 0.44. And then we're going to take a square root of this, I know you guys have to type it in differently than me because we are doing that. Now here's the problem, why, why do I have to take the square root? I don't, remember? Because what do we have to do? We have to fill in the b squared. So we can leave it right there and it says go out to four decimal places. Um, but as you can see, this will be 14,400.3 and we're done because the question said find the equation there you go tricky part of this was we could step forward because we do have an xy our xy coordinate is right there on the last page here it's just giving you some um kind of a wrap-up of the chapter of the different types of equations we use circle ellipse hyperbola and there's a parabola don't forget you're completing the square. Okay, ask questions if you need any help.